Welcome back to the show. Checking my microphones on, it is on. That's always good because we can turn it off. We have the power to turn our microphones off. That's just not a good idea. But sometimes we do. Just like that. So we are moving on to Inferno. I've forgotten like about 20 times. I believe it's Inferno. It's Inferno. That's why I wrote it down. Yeah, it's Inferno. We're going on to Inferno between these two teams. I thought Cash would be good for Envy, but NIP were better, unfortunately. Yeah, I think it could have been good for them, but NIP are just like also very good on Cash. So we might have a similar state of affair affairs on uh, Inferno. What do you what do you think? Same. Yeah. What yeah. do you think, Dan? Yeah. No. I I think it's just that Inferno is always classically an amazing map for Swedes. I think it just always has been, and I think we're gonna see more of the same. Like just just a step above where Envious are as far as just strategy and tactics goes, because we saw like a similarity there between Fnatic. Um, yesterday and how they were playing an NIP on cash just now and that they play very in a very active fashion Which is like a more advanced way to play generally speaking so envious that said we you know the In front of we did see of them their T-size were pretty good like they set up the rounds pretty well They developed the defaults pretty well. They had a very good good basics But I think to beat NIP right now you need a, something a step above that And I don't know if they're gonna be able to to show it to us But hopefully they can because then if they do be a really competitive game because they're good at Inferno Fingers crossed. Yes, I yeah, I don't know. I just felt like it, it, it's weird because I thought Cash would be good for Envy, and I thought I thought it, it would be better than Inferno. But Inferno can still be good. I don't know, man. I I, I want to see I want to see Envy uh, doing well. I want to see them put NIP on their back foot as much as I like. I NIP. think Banana's gonna be a big big problem for Envy on their T side. On Envy's T side. Yeah. Well, we're about to see that because Envy are starting on the T side. Scream with a flashbang and a smoke grenade, and he's got the P250 once again. Yay to P2. Well, yes to P250s. He's no need for a yay. I'm not a yay type. <laughs> I suddenly thought we were casting North American Counter Strike now. My that nephew a... says yay sometimes when he's being silly, but I'm not my nephew, and I won't say nay. <laughs> yay or nay. Not even if you're doing horse impressions. I don't do horse impressions, Dan. Except when you wear the horse head. I wish, wish I have pictures of. I haven't worn the horse head for a while, actually. I know it's a hot reference. I actually forgot about that completely. I, yeah. just, I just remembered how awesome I am. <laughs> Envy moving into the B bomb site. The whole team is here. Three CTs. Red Fang. Passive Red is dead. Get right will take his place. Will he be checked for? Of course he will be. Really wide play from Kishima, making it as hard as possible. Then it still delivers a kill. Well, get right will fall. Two versus three as the A rotation comes in for the CT side. Yeah, pretty good spot here for Envious. Bomb down, man advantage, you'd love to see that, but what are the headshots for? So far, NIP are making it work. Scream's very weak, actually, and without any Kevlar as well, he'll probably die in one. Good torso shots, we'll have to see. Forrest now the only man to try to do this. I don't know if he's going to be able to find a kit either. He's really running out of time as he makes his way forwards, and the crossfire is very difficult. Oh, can't quite get the instant headshot he required, and that will be the round for Envious. So they'll start off well, economically speaking, and any difficulties that may be experienced on Banana will be offsets for the time being, as NIP will not have grenades for some time. Yeah, it's just like Sean was saying, where you know, he's never really considered pistol rounds real CS. We don't get to see what Banana looks like when you have as many options as you do on full buys with all your utility. Typical for Mac 10 Envious. One thing we can recall from yesterday watching Envious play, they have they do have some fun banana setups. Like they had the three, the triple Molotov to just Molotov out all of top banana stuff like that. Would be really interesting to see how NIP responds uh, to to it. As Envious do have quite a few things which only like that, you know stuff that's just theirs. Like this is for example just their thing. Like no one else really does like four Mac 10s on these rounds. Is it good? Is it bad? I leave it. I leave it. I to love Mac Tens. I think they're extremely strong. They're cheap, and you can run fast and shoot. And I you feel Mac like 10s. a gangster. <laughs> I, I actually love Mac Tens, but I just I am just repeatedly betrayed by them. So uh, <laughs> that is a problem for me. Ninjas in pajamas with three players waiting for this push from NV, but they're not committing just yet. There's a flash in support for the Mac Ten player, but Kishima will get taken down towards CT. How many players have Envy seen? They're choosing to push behind this. Still three players remain. RPK moving into the site, charging the Coffin's position. And Rez will be laid to rest, but to Get Right is still there. Get Right's gone. One player in construction. We'll see what else can happen here for Envy. 
Yeah, I like the way Envy did this. We'll go to that in a second. See if there's a chance back in here for NIP. Maybe just sealing a Mag 10 could be the best possible scenario now. And considering that they have Deagles and, and Kevlar and so on, there's a pretty good argument to even saving this into the next round because drop the Deagle, drop the CZ, drop the Mag 10, and you just buy PT50, and then all of a sudden, you know, you've got uh, everybody with some stuff to work with. So I think that's probably more desirable, but they are pressing forwards. Can't quite land the shots, unfortunately, though, and everything will be lost, which is unfortunate. But one quick detail, I did like how envious they sent Kiyoshima first, then had a delay. And normally on these rounds, when you have a, a player with a Mac 10 you'll see the Mac guy with the Mac 10 and then everyone else with AKs. The guy with the Mac 10 goes to investigate the site and dies. He sees the stack. And then the, the whole point of that is so that the team can go elsewhere. And then, But here they actually just went with him, but just with a delay, which is quite, I thought that was quite a cool detail. It's the double mind games. Yes. They didn't actually end up doing abs anything at all, but but it's, it's, a, it's a cool detail. Sometimes you gotta do the double mind games. So you gotta get it out there. Kishima again will be the investigation man. Making as much noise as possible, trying to invite someone in. I like to bounce a grenade off that wall in case somebody's boosted. In HE? Yeah. Do you have the do you have a lineup or do you just No, I just throw it. Yeah. I don't actually check the effectiveness of it, but obviously I should. <laughs> I mean maybe it's maybe it's one of those nades. I was I was asking because maybe it's one of those nades that's pretty forgiving. But I, I feel like yeah, I feel like um you know, experienced players should have a good idea of the general distance of a grenade so you can judge it quite well. So just aim it for the middle. That's how I feel as well. Yeah, so I'd be surprised if I wasn't doing a good job there, but you should always check anyway. Good job has been done by Envy. They've managed to take B from the back. You know, that might actually be a good double grenade that you could throw th behind the smoke if yeah. you think they're set up. We've seen so many people do the flower setup and get kills from there in these matches. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think I think if you uh, have a team who will... Let's say a team who win, a, who win the pistol round, right? If they go 3-0 up, if they always start their first buy round the same way in that, in that, in that case, if they have the habit of putting somebody up there, then for sure. Triple Mac 10s versus this buy from NIP. Wow. This is the lightest buy in terms of utility. Once, okay, two smoke grenades and two flash packs for NIP on their CT side. Maybe this is because they have a read. They know that NV are going to bring the, the SMG nonsense. This, uh, this has to be because of that. The really hard part about this is that hard, it's hard to get aggressive without utility on CT side. There's not like really small plays you can do with one flash too easily unless you wait for something and then flash retake it. But they could go to halls, except that halls is it's so easy to take damage when you're getting set up. The way they're positioned though is like their expectance of the numbers, fairly passive apart from Dennis, who was somewhat forward, had some cover but didn't work out for him. So again, max distance. They're definitely expect expectant of these uh, SMGs, but how much more can they do with them? The trades are here, so perhaps it hasn't quite paid off for the NIP side. I was going to say that was such a good split, but they had the arch guys. They just let them, let them hang, ha hung them out to dry. They didn't even come out halls or lane. What, were you guys expecting NIP to buy some like UMPs and stuff so they could have full nades? Or I wasn't because I mean they they lost the pistol and then they four sports so they can't have any. Yeah, well, no, but I mean you could get famas. You could, yeah. I think you should have one or two people that will prefer to have nades. Yeah, if you bought a FAMAS, you could mm. you could get your, your normal smokes out at the very least. I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, f for me, there's there's an argument to have like even three three UMPs or something like that, so you can have just as, uh, as many nades as you possibly can. It's such like it changes Inferno so much having utility. Like you can't like you, what can you do? You can't do anything without utility. I think the worst part really is that they the other team knows what you have. Yeah. Because of the force buy, yeah. they know you don't have high like good guns, so. I think that's the bit, the biggest risk with the force. That's another reason why it's like one of the caller's like dreams on the T side when you know that, like when you see those very predictable circumstances and there's, you know that the CTs are limited to like one of two options and you can deduce which one they'll choose just because of how restricted that they are. And, and then now, you know, based on what, you know, the previous rounds, the caller has this situation where he's like, okay, they've got two rifles, they're to have a full buy, they're going to need to, you know, go for a save or two. Like, it's just very easy to call those first few rounds, I guess is what I'm getting at here.
fairly committed play from NV. One player keeping an eye on mid in case there is aggression there, perhaps. Sorry, two players. So, okay, this is just a presence then. Forgive me. Happy has his knife out to make the jump. I'm gonna jump to the balcony. Where are the CT players? Is there a stack? These are questions which require answering for the French and Belgians. No information, so they're now in a 2-3. Envy are having a great round. Pick guy goes down, and there's one rifle left. Kind of in the open. Has a lot of work to do. Can't get a kill, though. Yeah, get right. His movement there was very strange. It was it was like he was su surprised that there were opponents, because otherwise he's going to be taking... Because he was taking a diagonal peak, as opposed to a flat, wide... Yeah, he didn't peak. expect it. Yeah. And so it tells me he doesn't really expect it. And also, yeah, so that's unfortunate. Because there's a world where he can get those two kills and then there's a retake opportunity. But but yeah, as you said, there was no information for NIP. They, they, they just kept to the gamble. Sometimes, you know, just gambling is fine. But... And obviously, like, they, they didn't have really much in the way of guns or utility, so... That uh, makes it even a, a good call to to play the round in this way. But you look kind of stupid when this happens. Yeah, I mean, it's a risk. It's a risk to go for information. It's a risk to not go for information. But it's really stupid to not consider that sometimes it's less risky to take the initial take the initiative to look for map control early on. Yeah. Not that this is what they had to do or anything. They, uh, uh, I think that previous, the previous round where they were low on utility, but they had all five rifles, they probably should have done something a little bit more aggressive. But again, we talked about why it's hard. But here's a real chance. Tons of chip damage. He, he was almost dead. Now he is. But on the hold begins for the ninjas in pajamas. Grenade to go behind the sandbags. But the player is further back, as you can see, Res has a lot of space to play with. Has most of his health. And he's still holding on to his smoke grenades. Maybe feeling like Envy will be deterred for the time being. They've got a double peek, get right can back off. If he wants to, you see him going for the headshot position around the logs. And he goes even further than that, but they're still waiting for him. And now Res, what does he choose to do? Look, fight or flight, chooses to fight, and there goes B. Look how good that flash was, but get right peek dry. Draken, he collected the bomb for a second, but RPK shows why he is the king. Tough spot for Forrest. Ooh, that's a free one. Not expecting that. Does get traded out, though. Leaving a really tough spot for Draken. A doable spot, though. He's got an AK, full health kit. Molotov. So Draken can definitely make a go of it. Dennis, sorry. Don't know why I'm saying Draken. I'm really far away from the screen. <laughs> Now, how, when was that th uh, smoke thrown? It's probably what Dennis is wondering. It's dissipating though. There's the re-smoke, and that's from Pitts. He knows where one player is. I think he knows where the other one is as well now. He must know. Awkward spot. Happy will eventually take him down. A very good start, very strong start on the T side so far for Envious off the back of the pistol win. But the money is in a good place for NIP. That said, like, uh, at this round, I thought it was strange because NIP had top mid control. They had information that there was no presence towards top mid or apartments from the T's. But then we see the dry peak on Banana almost as though you're expecting there to be one person there. So it feels like NIP misread that completely. Misread or miscommunicated. Yeah. Definitely on an individual basis. I mean, I, I just don't I just don't know why he wouldn't have had the flash come out while he peeked just to get some information, if, even if the A guys weren't communicating properly. Yeah. So there is Rez trying to play around that... Uh, that smoke by the car position, but he got wrecked by Scream immediately, who uh, used his spawn to get up as deep as possible. And it's trying to make something happen in the meantime. So in the future rounds, you have to wonder if NIP will change their aggression towards the B-bomb site, because they've lost a man early over there. Yeah, they, they seem to be misplaying Banana, which is, what well, that's where I felt like they would have some strength. So if he's taking full advantage, and now they're going for the committed play onto A. And it's looking great. Everyone is fragging 
as they should be, and the bomb side is there. Is another save situation for an IP, and they've got to deal with banana better. Like they, I think I'm not sure. Like um, James, with the smoke, was the smoke the smoke we've been seeing? Like for example, from Device, where you throw the smoke before the Molotov comes uh, down onto car. I saw and the smoke with there, it. but I didn't see. I didn't see how the smoke came to be there. Because I but feel like that must be a meta thing now. But uh, you, you, you throw it at the corner of the wall right to his left there. And then it bounces to the right. That's what Device did anyway. Right, yeah, right, there was right. a significant gap though. And Rez was just in there on his own. Didn't work out. But uh, NIP may lick their wounds and come back better. They've, they've got to deal with Banana, but I think like that's every single round, that's where it's gone wrong. Like all their buy rounds, where things have gone very badly for them. They're just losing Banana in a really bad way. And Envy, on the other hand, looking very, very strong. Yes. Very, very strong. They're playing the advantage, advantages out very, very well. We saw really good calling uh, off of the back of the pistol win, which I say really good calling. Again, I think it's... it's I think every caller should know how to call from like from the the positions we saw. Like it means that'd be like a really easy video video to make, just because the the options of the TTs, as you said, are so limited. So it's very easy to predict what they're going to do and what they're capable of. And so far, it's been pretty flawless. Tactical timeout from Ninjas in Pajamas. What do we need to change? I personally think they could just do the exact same B nades that they did in the early round, did all that chip damage, killed Kyo coming through the molly. But then instead of playing top banana and peeking after they get that kill, just either smoking it off or, or holding to see if Envy want to aggress further. But again, just like you pointed out, then they've got to communicate whether or not they have top mid control as well. It's a little bit lighter on banana to throw a couple of nades down because that's kind of all they can afford. But fortunately for Kind of both of the teams. Envy haven't invested that many grenades themselves either. And they've actually got a lot more to work with. I was about to say, like that's like one thing you can condition the your opponents into doing is to expending a huge amount of grenades on banana because that's sort of what you've been doing. And then, but you don't do anything for that one round. And then, as you say, it's a pretty big disparity. Envy has a very big advantage of on a set, if they were to go for a set piece, as the counter grenades would be limited. But that's a good way to defuse a potential. Um, painful push. Smoke towards Arch. Bouncing off the corner. There we go. Nice. Nobody is top mid though for NIP, so they are devoid of information anyway. There's a Molotov and the flashes behind it. So reasonable amount of grenades being deployed by Haji. He's trying to sell the fake here and uh, Draken is getting curious towards Arch. Ooh, walking through the smoke. Not a good idea versus Mr. Delort. Let's get right now. Ooh, that's nasty. Get right, just waiting, being teased, delivering a second kill. Can he find a third? Perhaps he's done enough, along with his teammates, leaving Scream alone. Instant push through the smoke. It looked like Draken getting cheeky there, missing the shot though. Oh. And now Scream's got a one versus two. The bomb's not planted just yet, however. So he's delayed that, but the bomb will go down. Now Dennis is in position, but he wants a double pick. Oh, oh Scream! Woo! Not enough, not enough. NIP get their first round on the board, but Envy have so much money. They played that round really well. Envy played that round to a T, like very, very well. Because Draken got the pick. They already had cleared Banana. Obviously we saw NIP left it because their nades are so low. And then you get the, they just try to execute into the B side. And they did it with a really good timing. And the nades by Hachi to touch, like, sort of like fake top mid control was really good as well. So it's very simple. Yeah, I agree with all of that. I just think that Haji, I think it, I think at the very least Haji's job was to grab attention at A, and NIP for that reason were at some point going to call it out, and that's why Draken caught him. And maybe they win that round if Haji just goes back to Banana because he didn't actually pull a rotate right, out of B. Right. He held the rotates, which was great. And I think all the nades he chose were perfect. Yeah, like something for Lane, something for Arch, and a flash over. Oh, again, we saw this yesterday from Haji. He is definitely seeking redemption after the previous round and looking to break NIP, break their back after a solitary round win. Uh, what's Happy going to do here? He missed his window to try and trade that frag, but he's still going for it. But he has teammates in tow. Dennis, well positioned, however, by time now, baiting for his teammate, but he will go down eventually. Get right, he's got to spread again, but 
You won't get enough out of it, and that's the reset for an IP. That's pretty much good half right there. Holy smokes. I felt like Dennis's play there was really awesome, actually. That was like such a smart way to handle that situation. Yeah. We saw this exact same move from Hachi yesterday, walking in towards A. Just gets two kills. Dennis almost saves this hit, actually. If Get Right lands that spray, it's uh, probably an NIP round. It's a very, very, very marginal situation. It's pretty cool to see the switch up in pace from Envious as well, as far as their T side is concerned, hitting with a. Like, they put so much emphasis early round on B, Banana, and that was a very fast A round, which can punish the early three man setup on Banana, which NIP very well may have made. They didn't, but still. If they had, it would have been a very, 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 a much easier round. Yeah, I'm liking the Envy's T side right now. It seems like, it just seems like NIP, they, they really put their foot, they made some misreads and didn't handle Banana well in the first few buy rounds, and now they're, they're suffering for that. It's all about Envy's calling, and they're doing a pretty good job at the calling. <laughs> That's the Houdini. Okay, so they're gonna go A. We have one banana. Maybe? No, okay. RPK is actually backing away as well. Thought they leave RPK to like maybe re smoke the site, B site or something, and keep players there, but they've made it to A with good time. Draken patiently waiting. In terms of good time, oh, the Molotov, the headshot. You just wondered. You almost lust for disaster in a situation I, I, I like that. I saw the glasses coming down. <laughs> you almost lust for disaster, but there we go. Three USPs. I just wish you could have fired two bullets. Just two. Just two. Just two. I just want to. <laughs> So sad. Not a good map for an IP so far. How do you fix it, James? What would you, what would you do? Can't fix it if you've got no money. You just can't. Ain't got no money. It's actually it's huge advice. I mean, NIP are getting Vegas squadrons, man. If you don't have money, you're just put in a worse and worse position every single time. And then you somehow get to the point where you need rounds, despite how much money you have. Somehow draken has got an AWP out of this. I don't know how. I don't know who he's borrowed some cash from, but he's got the AWP, he's got a forward spawn, he has no Kevlar though, he could be exploded, exploderized by grenades. <laughs> okay, you corrected exploded with exploderized. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just but staying out there, man. Risks must be taken. This isn't scary for Draken, he's just like, don't let me get killed, bro. This is scary for Den. <laughs> yeah. They stand on that for so long, which is interesting because, you know, how do they read that? They likely read it as a lot of presence on Banana, which would be correct. There's three players in the vicinity, but NFP don't have the utility to really challenge it. So it's a lot of guesswork at the moment. But the grenades may start to confirm that there are a few players renvious in that position. But we know that NIP are pretty hungry to make a play if they possibly can. It's just that at this timing in the round, there's so many things that could be happening. There's so many players that could be all over the place that it becomes very, the risk becomes too high to start wandering around. So they're waiting for a NBS to do something. And do something they will. A lot of grenades towards B. They know NIP's utility can't be high, so they're trying to bait out as much as possible. Oh, this could be big. Oh boy. He knows. He knows. The flash and support. Oh, oh, two would have been everything, but ended up being something. Not nothing. Not it all. 20 seconds for the bomb to go down. Resmoking the uh, CT position as the CTs start to stream in, but they will stream back out again. Save time for Ninjas in Pajamas. A horrific CT side from them so far, but it is fantastic for Envy. Much needed lead, but again, we need them to converse as well. They've got to get some Ws on the board here. Yeah, it's definitely not looking like that is going to be happening anytime soon with the way things have been going. 
again, just another really good round from Envious. They, I, I think their calling has been just really on point on this T side. I, I think in a part of the objective for them in this round was take it slow because, like, first of all, they're, they're thinking, let's not get wrecked by aggression. We saw them be very slow on their timings towards Banana. The second thing is they wanted to draw out rounds where they're trying to actively bait out utility. And then they set up a situation where they can go for an execution onto the B site where there's limited to no counter grenades for the CTs. So that's very, that's very good basics from Envious in that regard. And in also leaving it for so long, NIP's options for aggression diminish massively without massive risks. So it's going well for the French. Jack has had enough. Oh. He's had enough. How is that not a headshot? Who knows? Either way, he's dead. And now that's a nasty surprise. Forrest, where's the communication? Hasn't come fast enough. Perhaps Scream concerned that he was going to get uh, pinched from the players up top. Either way, it's not a good situation for Envy. But how long can NIP stand here? Because you've got to assume people are in second mid. So Forrest is going to go down. Not without a fight, though. And there is the instant flank from Get Right. Leaving Happy and Haji alone. But it seems that they have still got a round to win. Happy's picked up the bomb. He spotted one play moving through the middle area. Can raise the alarm to his teammate. But his teammate's in the pit. So Happy has to make his way with the bomb towards the A site. Chasing one player. But there's one more waiting for him on Banana. Surely this bomb's going Ooh. to be lost. Happy. That's a massive headshot from him. They are really fighting <laughs> for this one. The bomb is still in mid. It is still recoverable for Haji. But get right. So sneaky. 50 seconds to go, and Dragon will pick Haji out of the air with the AWP. And NIP went around by forcing the pace, forcing themselves onto their opponents, and not allowing Envious to have any say or in how the round is dictated. I think they needed to tighten up, though, after they got those kills, because they're still at risk. and They can't afford another reset here, and Envy has so much more money than them. Could avoid that 13-2 situation, which could very well be the case. And as Lorne has pointed out, Draken going aggressive sees nothing. It's pretty cool, actually. Again, we see that that Molotov so commonly now by the, the car. Although it doesn't make too much sense unless the T's are pushing with it. Palmer's control being worked on slowly but surely by the Envious side. And NIP, NIP have a three-man setup towards the, the quad and pit side A. Abandoning Arch completely. This is really nice for NIP because they get to hold on to B with just their off, which I think is the ideal situation. But now that they've kind of retaken it or started to... Ooh. Oh, that was so close for Draken. So close. But it is RPK after all. RPK won't give you much chance to kill him. Moving through towards the B bomb site now. Rez trying to delay, but it's a bit too far. A bit too late. RPK charges all the way through to the construction position. Rest of a nice angle. I don't even know where he got hit from the head from. But he did and he's dead. Now it's time for Envy to rotate. They've got Scream moving towards the arch position. He should here get right towards Speedway. And there's a grenade as well. Oh, I, li I liked having him there. Yeah, just holding arch, yeah. Holding the rotation. Either way, now he joins the, the main effort. Let's see if it's going to work out for them. He's going to be the bait, so he has sacrificed himself to get the bomb down, and it may happen, but there is a player on coming quickly towards the quad position. I believe it is Get Right as he makes his way around. Happy holds the angle. Very good crosshair placement. Happy switches around for the library position, but will find himself the victim of Dennis. Now it's the new man, the academy man. All grown up and looking to clutch with the AK-47. Ooh, very tough, both players bearing down upon him, and NIP will crush Envious this round. One HP for Rez is enough to win the round. He'll delay while the AWP is collected of Draken. He has a kit. Back on the bomb, back on the AWP. Based on how much presence they just had to be, I think it was very, like, very important for Stream to sit there at Arch because of his such an advanced position that he can, if he got that first kill, you know, no one else can come in, come close. They can get the bomb down. It'd be very difficult to deal with him. But it was obviously called for him to just, I think, go lane with his teammates to trade out. It's nice after that first kill, Draken tries to buy as much time as possible before getting, tr uh, to avoid getting traded to get his second sh shot off by strafing to the left. Smart play from the experienced sniper. 
And I'd be looking for round number four. And the needs to smoke these players up. The more rounds they give, the harder it will be. And once again, surprisingly plays towards the bomb site, but it is a war of attrition around Inferno. Track and able to take some defensive shots, and it's going to go well for him. Scream taking control of Arch, but the bomb is on quad, so that is the point of concern now for Envious as they also need to worry about flanking. We can see Get Right on the task. Scream was ready for it though, turning his attention to Get Right. And now the round becomes fairly doable here. They're running out of utility, they have to make it work. The peaks, the raw peaks. But the positional advantage of NIP is surely too much, but still happy with a nice peek and shot into Forrest's face. Just go back. Makes the dream quite doable here. But challenging Draken could be a mistake. Take shot comes in, it's going to whiff. Draken has a lot of room to play with here. He can try to ro rotate everything she's actually doing right now, or he could, could have just stayed where he was towards Moto and waited. Scream unsure what decision was made by Draken. So many ways for Draken to play this. Could come late quads, could still be hanging around Arch or Library, but he's coming out of the balcony. And that's a great shot there. No hesitation. Very, very nice from Draken. But they have to wonder, should they have gone back? I wonder, yeah. I, I'm not sure why that wasn't their first thought. Maybe it's because Draken, I guess, could have wrapped around to the other side and taken a peek. And they're worried about it for that reason. I guess it's a devil you know versus devil you don't. You know where he is versus rotating and resetting the situation and him have maybe having an angle on the B-bomb site. Surprise yeah. Scream didn't consider that he could come from short there with yeah. his plant, but maybe he probably thought he would hold an angle to see if uh, Scream crossed the pit instead. Draken top mid once again. Not afraid to peek, but then who is there to really challenge him on that duel? Nice fast peek there. No one loses anything from either side. Forrest, how many kills does he get from this? Oh my god. He's being flanked though. Pushing through the smoke, but he's showing too much body. I can't believe he just went for that. That's so insane, just pushing the smoke and apps. What a beast. Happy now, pushing the smoke on balcony with the flashbang. And there is a setup on the bomb side itself. And Draken and Get Right are melting the French side. They are unable to do anything here as they move into the bomb site. I think they felt like they had more of an advantage than they did. Kiyoshima trying his best here, but it's really difficult to get in. Draken is hitting all of his shots. Another massive round from Draken. Three kills this time versus the four last round. He doubled his score in two rounds. This will be a weird game to lose, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Mankeys. Mankeys. Is that like Hankies? Pokemon? Mankey, yeah, it's like a monkey Pokemon. Oh, is oh. it? Where does it say that? <laughs> Somebody just won face it points. It uh -huh. comes and it goes, Launders. You must pay attention. You must focus. You must be like water if you want to see the face it points <laughs> be uh, distributed. Scream, how many does he see? Is that two on the radar or is it three? Either way, it's a pistol round and uh, not much information can, can really be taken. Just yet. We've seen many a slow pistol round recently. This might be another one. Get right with a smoke and a flash. Maybe it's for B. Okay, so pretty chilled. Start by NIP. Oh, the jewels, the jewels. Kishima liked it, but now he doesn't like it any, uh, so much anymore. Happy. Gets a spot that they're moving into top mid. We get the rotation starting to come in. Scream does manage to get a kill, but receiving a dink makes life difficult. NIP will know that. And they're actually going to rotate here. But we four still, and they've done some good damage. This is a good call. Hadji alone in the B-bomb site. The rotation, will it come fast enough? And indeed, the grenades are ultimately for the B-bomb site. Flashbang over the roof, very powerful. Hadji still alive, around the top in position. Hadji's dead. Boost is here though. Oh, PK, that second shot was nasty. And he's kept his team in the game. Although, Scream is still on the A bomb site for the time being. So, RPK, uh, sorry, Happy Now is alone. Although, ooh, hold on a second. 
Where is he going with the bomb now, Draken? Crossing back to the site and landing the headshot immediately. And they see Scream of 6 HP. Oh, Not yeah. afraid is Draken, such an aggressive player. I wondered if he were going to see some next level rotation. There was 13 seconds up at that point. Uh -huh. Or right at, I mean, he might have been able to when he went to Picanetta, but like right at the end of the round. If the Scream had uh, lived, it would have forced a very awkward plan for Draken. But yeah, that was a little bit weird. Llama. See? You see it? A llama has one now. Say llama? Llama. A llama. Oh. It really takes the llama's ass. Three nades B, and I P Turner their attention to mid. <laughs> why are you laughing? What's why uh, are you just laughing? that's just the immediate response is just like, alright, well, less players today, let's go. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. I feel like that needs to be a buy round strat. Three HEs to have a strat. How do we breach top mid in uh, the best way with minimal risk possible to try and go for a fast round? When people often go 3B, where do the two people start at? How can we exploit those positions? Yeah, it's How likely is it someone's going to be in the pit? Should make bone strap for it. Should. You should become a professional player. <laughs> I'm a professional player, just no one's paying me. <laughs> I want team boxer now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm paid in key caps and t shirts. Okay, so in NIP. perpetuity. What's that? <laughs> in perpetuity. Perpetuity. It's like a C org contract for a billion years. <laughs> Well, three rounds away, and the reality of NIP making this this game that was so awful for them to, to, to begin with a victory is is starting to become a possibility, depending on how the CT side of Envious goes. Each side winning a pistol apiece on their uh, P side. Some good early nade damage done by Envious. NIP suffering a bit. But they can run into the stack. Just put the nades in the right spots, get get right in there first, and then life will be good. Let's see this, get right. Nice, sniping him down with a MAC-10. That's how you do it. Back alley surgeon, get right. With his precision MAC-10. Now to the CZ as the stack continues to fall. The Jenga pieces have been obliterated. And now Envy are on the buy. 8 to 10 in favor of the French speaking side. What to do now? The domination of the first half seems like a distant memory. And now they have to uh, claw their way to a win, Envious, versus a probably favored NIP. An exchange of Molotovs. Both these teams like petrol. Oh dear. Second uh, T player accidentally threw his Molotov into the back of his teammate. Rez and throws. Oh. I was going to say Rez throws one of the most important smokes there. The top banana once he sees the extra Molotov coming down. And that's just what T's have been doing to deny anybody from peeking behind that car while the Mollies are down, like the carpet Molotovs, the banana flambe. <laughs> this really just calms it down. Here comes the push. Dennis hop, skip, and a jump. But this is not an Olympic event, and so you will die. Kishimo with a wild spray there. He's got the hose on the wrong the wrong. I think he was nose. trying to uh, rocket jump there for a second. It's not TF2. It's not jump underscore pagoda. Excuse me, you can't you can't you can't say rocket jumps. TF2 can't be the first thing that comes to mind, please. Come on, that's I used to play, I used to play rocket jump maps in TFT. Yeah, I don't, I don't care, James. It's just dumb and wrong. <laughs> <laughs> NIP looking to plant the bomb, but there are two NV players in construction already. So uh, Envious are as well positioned as they might be for, um, as they could be perhaps, for the retake here. No one on Banana, but uh, that's okay. 
Forrest missing the first shot. Grenades coming in from the CT side. He's still got them lined up well. Moving around the pillar. Looking for the taps is Forrest. He's doing nasty work. But it's not going to be enough. Oh. Draken, they will finish things off. Fish back Garden gosh. hose for Draken. Forrest looking for them highlights, man. He's feeling it today. Nine for 17 on this map, but just look at these. Look at that. Beautiful precise shots. The Draken's like, just like spray. Mouse one, let's go. This, this is beginning. I mean, it depends on like how the next two buy rounds go for Envious, but this is this could start becoming very demoralizing considering how well they played. I felt I felt like they played really well on that T side. They had really good discipline. Considering um, they lost their last seven maps at this point, I would just be like, we're losing. Like that's the in our yeah. mind. You know, it's, it's hard. Your confidence must be very low. It's definitely tough. That that in of itself is an interesting discussion point. Are there ways to mit mitigate that, or is it just something that is just, you know, present? Is it something that is different for every person? Like, for example, does Cold Zero have a quality where he always thinks he's going to win? It's like, you know, it's just. Yeah, yeah. Or it's, maybe he wants. To, maybe it's also wanting to win so badly that nothing else matters. And it's hard too because it's there's a difference between like you consciously thinking that and you sort of subconsciously what you actually actually believe in, your, in your bones. You Absolutely. Know, so. <laughs> That's why good leadership is important too because sometimes how confident you feel depends on how confident you feel like teammates feel because you don't feel like you have control over that. Yes. So yeah. if you know if a good leader that can instill confidence in everybody, you feel like, all right, as long as he's feeling it, letting us know that he feels confident, then we all feel good. It's a little bit easier to be invested. This is a cool push from Envious and Apps and it, and it Definitely punishes M NIP for not really pressuring it a bit heavier. And that's actually really nice because a lot of teams do actually spend the early round going to Banana. So this makes the play viable. Hachi looking to defend pretty effectively. That's, that's good damage. I'm surprised that Flash didn't flash him, but I suppose it was designed for maybe somebody in the uh, short position behind the pillars. So it went deeper. That's all I can really make sense of. Forrest taken out. Happy was there for quite a long time, and now they find themselves in a two versus four in IP. One of these two teams looking to take the lead. Happy tries to exit its apartments, and that appears to be a mistake. Scream in the pit position. Moving deep and making it more awkward if someone's on, on the balcony. We'll also avoid a Molotov should one be thrown. And IP moving really slowly, and that will allow the CTs to close in on their position. Poor Scream. That's going to be a quick plant now for NIP. They have a very solid chance here. Kiyoshima lurks. Reaper, no, just jumps in. Launches himself into Dennis. He was not aware of that move. Draken now has to do it from the pit. Smoke is down. Really awkward position for him. They're going to try to take the fight together as they push him. He's going to work the side of the smoke in. USP comes out. Should be more than enough time for Kiyoshima to get the defuse there. I actually thought that they were about to throw that around there, but Kiyoshima nails it. There's hope for the French. It's been a good day for Kiyoshima today. Yeah. Despite the L, I mean, personal performance has been has been, uh, it's been alive and kicking, been rocking. Still a tight match, both teams on the bye. Draken with $15,050 or something along those lines at the beginning of this round. So there's lots of pressure now. NIP can uh, get some revenge on, on Envy in that regard. Keep the pressure up on the economy. Envy, can they string some rounds together on a CT side now? It's really important that they do if they are to take this one down the line. Happy on the sniper rifle. Some flashes top mid. Try to push players back, but they will hold steadfast. Green playing the balcony position from the side, moving around. The other two will uh, be content top mid for the time being. Smoke on Arch. Happy going for a timing shot. No uh, smoke in response at the top of mid. And now when I try to clear out the banana position, they'll trade RPK, but there's one more behind the smoke. They pull the rotate, minute up. Oh, they're actually going right through it. Wow. Great flash. I didn't even expect that. Really nice first flash. Happy able to take control of construction pretty quickly, but NIP not looking too bad on this take. The only issue is that Getright is looking for the flank. He needs to really 
Now he's gone so deep, Gary really needs to come back and help his teammates. I think he's going to do that as he reappears from top and honor. And Draken fast as the smoke dissipates. He is ready with his finger on the trigger. And another oh. player comes in for the peak. It's Happy. Happy's doing a pretty good job quite fast himself as he looks for the next one. Oh, he connects that, but it's not going to be the finishing shots, unfortunately. The legs, legs are too long. He's got long legs, James. Happy long legs. <laughs> AWP to be collected. There we go. Damn, that was almost a great round for Abby. I wonder where that flash went. I guess it went over the CT roof. Do you mean the one? In that position. I th I thought it went next to it. I don't know. I didn't I didn't see it on the screen. I'm just trying to guess. Okay. I I think I saw it go next to him, but I might be wrong. Pretty cool either way. And indeed, it has broken the money of NV, but they did rescue the AWP at the end of the last round, so Happy needs to try and make some plays with that. In the apartments. For the time being. How about that for a setup? Dennis, not committing. Now three people in apartments. I actually like this because early round, if you think a team goes banana often with two to three players, taking people into apartments you know, usually it would be a bit unfavorable, but for the CTs, but if you know that you're going to be 3v1 in that situation early round, you can get a lot of info and potentially get a free kill. So it's, it makes a lot of sense to do it in a round like this. Yeah, this is kind of what NIP didn't want to do on their half force up with an op type round on CT side in the first half. So, I mean, it's nice. They got some information. They at least helped them rotate a one, at least one over to B. Yeah, <laughs> NIP. Going back, very sneaky stuff. And this is what we're talking about previously. We, we talked about how light-footed the CT side is, how quick they are to rotate when you're on a force buy mm -hmm. situation. You really want to desperately get into position in time, so you go off of the slightest information. And so NIP have exploited that magnificently here. This is well, since they're walking back, you think, all right, well, they're not at B. Of course, they're going to go. Uh, they're going to go A here. But Envy have actually stacked harder than ever at B because they think that NMP were just going to regress on top of that. So it makes a lot of sense too, right? Because you don't want to be caught out of position, so you kind of have to gamble at a certain point. Mm -hmm. I also think you uh, look significantly more stupid <laughs> if you rotate back and they re-exec. Yeah, yeah. So, or feel stupid. That's true. And that's the interesting thing too, like some t different teams have different styles. Some teams do like to make things look really elaborate, mm -hmm. whereas some teams won't go past like a double fake. Like that's that's like the hard limit because it, things do get very complicated. You, you create a lot of unknowns when you start to begin to do stuff like that. And so it can make it harder to play out the rounds. Yeah, it's kind of a question of, can you have a repeat rock, paper, scissors champion? Yeah, you know? yeah. Because <laughs> it does come down to that. But at the same time, there is some merit to the mind game. Okay, we're looking at Molotov here. Oh. Wow. Nice. I haven't seen that for a while. Nice. Everyone gets wrecked. And if they're, well, if you're at the back of the site. All who is, all who is at the back of the site gets wrecked. Hachi! Oh, he's in trouble now. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I hate to see that. Got to hit those first shots. As soon as the guy gets into pit. He's getting smoked, man. Damn. Okay, right, it's going even further. Is this the uh, the run to victory? Four ninjas in pajamas. AWP unable to get anything done here. Kishima doing more damage with the Deagle, but this is where Happy needs to capitalize. The flashbang. That's not even a player. Can't really go back to the world now. One versus two. What do NIP choose to do? Using the smoke oh. as a fake flashbang. The quick scope, maybe too quick. The idea was great. The back was turned. But the round was full of NIP. That was actually on as well. I think he's just running, right? Yeah, he jumped in, I think. Nice. So, yeah, he jumped in. Oh. That's unlucky, man. Yeah. That was a good play, because, you know, the standard retake would have gone nowhere. Op 1v2, yeah. and you let them get pick their spots. So, he had to do something like that. And maybe, they, maybe they're lined up in that spot, and you get the double or something like ridiculous. Still, like I just said, it like, looks better than the drawn out, somewhat impossible 1v2. So we got the 
Scream and Apps doing a good job here. The Molotov doing a really good job in sort of obscuring Scream for Get Right, allowing Scream to have an advantage in the fight. And now the Resmoke here. So it's gone, out, it's gone very well here for Envious. It's a very interesting game insofar as things are sort of tightening up now between the two teams. And NIP, though, they have taken a decent lead. Look at the amount of map control that Envy have. This is unreal. Like here, they want to, you know, you still want to play 4A, but they have two fast flanks at the bottom of banana. This is like, there's basically no way NI NIP win this. If they don't, if, as long as Envy just don't give them a free kill right here, let them execute, there's, there's no way. Well, their smokes are running out, and they are going for the flank after all. Spotting three players, RPK bursting. That's two down. Still patient on the third, but Kishima's there to trade. Does he hold his ground, Kishima, though? Wow, look at that. The distraction. Cap Happy will capitalize on it. AWP is rescued once again. NIP crushed. The best thing round. about this, too, is that if you want, is that, that RPK is the first guy, because those are actually deceptively hard shots to guarantee to get the two kills there. But still, I really liked how they did just keep two people at the bottom of Banana. You rarely see that. It's, it's more standard only to leave one. And it's cool to see that mix up because it also says to an IP in the future that you have to respect. If they've taken Banana like that, you do need to take it back from them to prevent that. Oh, it's flash did not quite work out, but Happy's holding off Angle anyway. Changing the setup of the CT side. IPK continues to deliver though. This time, Rez will find some revenge. That will put Envy in an awkward spot. Does Kishima hit a flashbang? He manages to avoid it. No commitment behind it. Oh my god. Kishima not afraid. Great addition to Envy he is proving to be, but does he have more in him? He hears the footsteps, surely. Rez lining up a grenade. Kishima seems to have a read on it, and he just continues to deliver. And that Molotov means that they can't even push. Yeah, he's feeling it's... That was really, really nice work. He knows that there is a trade fragger there. He set that shot up really well and created has created hell for an IP. But there are enough players dead that it's kind of chaotic for everybody at this point. So many blind spots on the map. Scream catches Rez at the perfect timing, leaving Get Right in the 1v3. Scream really needed to get around that corner in time. That's crazy. Get Right heard Hadji running around in the apartments and he understood that Hadji was pushing and there would probably be a hole in shorts. But it just can't move fast enough. And there's another round for Envy. 13-13. Hard to see where, which way this one's going to go now. It does, yeah. It's a uh, really <laughs> very interesting game. But th this is just brilliant textbook stuff from Kiyoshima. You always have to be thinking about the trade fragger yep. just as a default uh, sort of. And the you know the guy who comes to help Rez fight, he thinks that Kiyoshima's on the left side. So Kiyoshima realizes that Rez can't fight for that second. The other guy's probably going to swing on me to make sure I trade. And he goes out wide himself just to make it weird for the guy who's probably pre-aiming the left side. Yeah, and then last, when he goes down, eventually he can't even see the guy because of the flame. So who knows if he might have got more. 13 apiece. These buys are becoming more and more important. NV of one smoke. Two smokes, sorry. And a bunch of flashes. Happy in the uh, couch position. Do you wonder if he's on the couch? If he knows Draken is also awesome. Or ping. <laughs> then uh, if Draken pre this position, the couch would help him stay alive if he was if he was tagged because he'd be elevated. That's what you used to see on Inferno. Don't really see it anymore on New Inferno. Snipers often play next to the site corner instead so they can better support the short position. Once they know where you are as well, shooting from inside library is uh, really successful and very difficult. Scream with a cheeky pick. The bursts from Scream. He's seen the bomb as well, which means the B players can rotate. They're not moving just yet, though. I don't know why. 40 seconds. The bomb's kind of stuck in short, so the rotation should be coming in. But is it even needed? Scream of three. Four versus two. And uh, now they start to rotate, but maybe the damage has been done anyway. Happy will eventually go down. And Haji is there to trade. No plant for NIP, and they might be on eco. That was a great round from Envy. They were not respecting the information. NIP seemed uh, a little bit uncomfortable coming up. It looked like at the end of that round, they didn't even really want to commit to A. And they were a little bit slow here. And this is Scream's dream round, where he's getting his fights one-on-ones. They're kind of in front of him. He has two or three seconds to engage. Like, those are the fights he's going to win 90% of the time. So he set himself up really well for those. Yeah, close to medium range. He will devastate you. 
I played Scream on Cash in matchmaking once. How was that? Pretty painful. Yeah. All you had was ding. Then you're watching. Suddenly you're watching your teammates. Yeah. Who else? Whoever else is alive? <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it was interesting to see that Envious decided to take a, a super passive set of that round. As you say, like there's no info at any point for them, and and NIP got sort of punished um, for not ex trying to exploit that by running a default, which is I don't know exactly you know what would have been the reason for that, but like if you look at that round in hindsight, you see that if they have one man going banana, they at least give themselves the chance to double back, as you say they they would likely have wanted to, and either way, Envious now putting presence back onto banana, keeping things. Unpredictable. But then IP only have pistols at this point. So Envious are really in a position where if everything goes right from this point forward, they, they should really win this game. About to be offered up match point right here. Oh, it's definitely a good start. RPK and Kyo have been doing a fantastic job with Banana. Yeah. Kyoshi was a very versatile player. He's, he's a very smart player as well. And he's pretty good under pressure. Um, I've always had, had quite a lot of respect for his abilities. He's one of those very smart clutch, like clutch players. If you watch him in a 1BX, he's often very, very good in them. The problem. Fish in a barrel. Right then, match point. NIP playing for overtime. Successful game of Inferno for Envy so far, but it all counts for nothing if they don't take the W. Reasonable grenades for NIP. Five AKs as well. Draken 30 for 16 at the moment. And he's reduced to the AK-47. Although he was explosive on the CT side. Oh my god. Oh, Dennis is a long journey and he will not make it. That was his teammate's Molotov? Why was he running through that far? I think because the CT's put one behind it, which he got caught in, and he felt like I guess he, that he could but make he it. But he should have known that that Molotov was landing, even if it wasn't there yet. Not like it's his fault, but uh, you know, either four should have been like... I feel like when he, they said about a spawn, it should have been understood. Is this the W for Envy? Five on three now. I like that push from Scream. Knowing that there's so many people on Banana, that's a pretty safe push in apps to take. Last chance saloon on A. He said it's been working very well for Envious so far. The wait, the tension builds. They are really not leaving themselves too much time here. Rares to take the initiative. Oh, happy so ready for that though. NIP. Not much going for them at this point. Forrester gets, does get one at the end. Is a 1v3 for him, but no time, no bomb, no inferno. It's envious. They they actually came back. Really, I I thought maybe after that start that maybe some of those internal issues start to crop up. We start to see them fade away, but they managed to really bring it back. Yeah, I was losing confidence for them almost. I feel like I felt that before, where you just everything nothing ever works, and then the one game where you get a lead, you blow it, and then. You know, it just feels like it's gonna happen again. You're just gonna lose again. But they really had good composure and a good game plan on CT side. And I think it was in particular RPK and Keo who did a great job holding down Banana. But look at all these kills from Draken. Went to the 30 mark at the very least. I got a fair few on the T side as well. But ultimately, it's Envy to finally get some much-needed points on the board. The ETS leaderboard. Very uh, desperate times in that respect, but uh, they've done it against some of the perhaps tougher opponents. NIP after a horrific cash as well. So there it is, 16 to 13. Draken going 31 kills, far ahead of anybody else on the server. Almost hitting the 3,000 mark, but not quite. But there we go. NV have won their first game of ECS, and hopefully they'll be able to win some more.
in the future because they, I think, are one for seven now, and that isn't uh, spectacular by any means. It's kind of a shame, isn't it? Because I think that it's again, it's a new lineup. I, you know, it has a, a it has a core already. You know, got happy up UK and so on there, and 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 so I feel like it is a team where it does need a little bit of time because I think like matches like this, like we you look at that T side. They know how to play CS to like a, a pretty darn good level. So I feel like the seven losses doesn't reflect how good they are at the moment, which is a bit sad. We can have a look at the, have a look at the leaderboard and see uh, what these matches mean for these teams. So there we go. NV eight matches played, one win on the board. NIP not doing too shabby at the moment. They've got a game in hand over Phase, and they are tied for points. So. That's all fine. All good in the hood. That is the European section of today's broadcast done. We are going to be moving to North America after a short break. So don't go anywhere. We will be back very shortly indeed.